Okay. Yeah, very good evening to all of you. So I really want us to address a couple of things here. So if you see, um, we'll be launching our 50 days. Yes, you might call it 50 days, but yes, I'm going to call it 50 hours of what? Virtual workshop. All right. It's going to start from the 3rd of July all the way to the 31st of December this year. All right. So you see, um, I have actually observed something and um, it's kind of a sad development that, you know, many a times when you get to final year, and you, I mean, you don't even know how to go about tackling your final year projects. So you end up paying people outside, you know, the campus to do your projects for you. Um, well, there are maybe a couple of reasons. So don't blame the system for it. OK, rather, you should blame yourself for not utilizing the opportunity that was thrown to you. So that was, you know, out of passion, I decided that we we're going to work on this together and please uh, hear me out it is entirely free and it's going to happen only on weekends so if you pop up your calendar you'll be able to see that we'll be starting on the third that is um i mean the third of july that is a sunday and i have kept the time also considering so many people things in mind okay so uh from 6 p.m all the way up to 8 p.m so what are we going to do we'll be looking going through most of this stuff now we're going to address python from a different perspective if you watch i actually did some 50 days of python but in between you know we most of us lost the, that enthusiasm so i decided to see uh, bombarding you guys every day is not going to work right so this is a, an effort you know towards ensuring that actually you guys are getting the best out of this channel okay so we go from the very beginning right use some real life case studies start building projects even in the first uh, class itself now once we are done with deep learning and all whatnot now we go ahead and start you know looking into real-time case studies permit me to digress a little bit so what you are seeing on the screen uh let me start from here uh maybe i'll start from here what you are seeing on the screen is uh a real-time tweet sentiment analysis so you see i actually was working on this and then i discovered that yes for me to connect to the twitter api i need to apply for the developer license right okay so i need to be authenticated as a developer so i tried initially it was rejected because i wasn't active on twitter so what i did was yes i tried um, following some people and things like that now you can actually see here it says the account is not eligible to access this resource all right so what did i do next so i actually decided to go ahead with that okay after i have kind of authenticated the stuff you know after i've got access to that but in between you see he says you currently have as you i mean you currently have essential access okay so i need to apply for elevated access right so what happened next now i decided okay which one is now elevated access as you can actually see here so let me permit me to go a little back i think i closed that okay one minute i'll just show you that okay um so um, what you actually see now is, um, if, if you permit me to start afresh, so what I was telling you is, so I thought I could easily bypass the settings, right? So either way, I somehow got an, uh, got a developer account. But if you watch here, right, I still have limited access because it says I have only essential access. And for me to actually uh, connect to whatever and do the real time tweet mining, okay analysis in real time i need to apply for elevated access so that i did and they can actually see it here so i now have access to about two million tweets per month and it is entirely free right so um this is one of a classical case and uh let's go here and just i'll show you in a while all right so for that i need to reconnect it doesn't really matter so i'm going to scroll up quickly because the other things you just saw was part of my um access code and things like that so i was actually pulling this thing in real time and as you can see this was last run on june 4th okay so and from here i was actually able to make um, some analysis based on elon Musk's tweet okay and then from there i now classify the tweets as either positive negative or neutral okay now that is number one now another thing you might that might that interests me i think i was actually training this so it says uh, okay in between it just failed because i was trying to train that as you can see in an hour ago so but no problem it says uh, doesn't have this attribute load image no problem it's part of some error message there so this again is a simple neural network that will be able to classify an image 
as that of a cat or a dog so for this i use a cnn model for that all right so another thing that might interest me let me go to this one now okay this is the modified national institute of standard and technology and as you can see most of the stuff is available on github okay and then i actually ran this from here what i just showed you now i ran it actually from what google collab all right so let's get back to this modified national Institute of standard and technology stuff which is all about handwriting recognition right so if you see i was actually able to train the model and it's able to say recognize that this is a character tree so no problem and you can actually do lots of things here right so for now this code might sound like greek and latin to you nevertheless at the end of the whole workshop or you call it web uh, bootcamp or whatever you'll be able to understand every code in detail fine now let me show you another thing that interests me so if you look at this this is on hard disease prediction problem right so where you have to take an image and now based on some stuff now this is mostly on uh, i downloaded this from the uci repository don't worry about that now it's just some uh, numeric data sets that talks about some parameters now think of parameters as some attributes right which influences whether the person is going to have a heart attack or not so and these are some of the parameters right so no problem now from here we did some stuff and then we're able to predict you know most of the patients who are actually prone to diabetes fine and they did some distribution and things like that now this is actually running on your notebook so at the end of it all i'll tell you how you can turn this into a real-time project and deploy that in real time okay now by the way these are not all my projects okay also i got this from uh i think from kaggle i think so okay so all credit goes to the person right but what the essence here is i really want you to understand that yes it is actually easy okay you'll be able to build it you'll be able to build things like this fine now let's look at another thing that interests me so since my work revolves mostly around medical imaging so as you can see clearly here this is what images of chest x-ray of patients who actually suffered from covid 19. again it's available on public repository for researchers to use and do their analysis so here i use a restnet model so now don't think about that now think of them as what pre-trained uh, cnn models okay so for now don't think too much so from there now i was actually able to train this and then make prediction whether this person has covid and to what extent this person as you can see 55 percent is not says it's not covid and 95 percent or 96 percent says it's covid right so this 98 so in this case now this is going to serve as like a second opinion I'm, i know you must have heard of that right so where a doctor diagnoses you of a disease and another doctor says no let me you might not have the disease so you are now in dilemma right so this might be a kind of a second opinion trying to you know validate whether you should go for a test or i mean whether you should go for the prescription or not okay so and from here we have we actually completed what we call what the classification reports okay so based on the confusion metrics no problem and you know some behavior don't worry don't think so much about the graph now that is resnet and what chest x-ray similarly this was also trained on what ct scan images so ct scan stands for computer tomography as you can actually see here again it's that of the long and you see okay so why are we actually doing this we want to know either of these okay which modality i'm talking about chest x-ray or ct scan is actually better at discriminating covid so this was a project i did last year as you can see there and the similar thing i worked on inception v3 on ct scan and again inception v3 on chest x-ray images okay now i have spoken to you about this and i have spoken to you about this hard disease thing so let me tell you about another project so this again was trained on uh, google collab right so and this was on white blood cancer prediction okay so trend the stuff now look at the accuracy accuracy actually uh, was better and i will tell you how we were able to get this much this uh, uh level of accuracy okay by fine-tuning some of the hyperparameters no problem and made prediction in real time it was able to classify whether the patient has cancer or non-cancer looking at microscopic images okay don't get me wrong all right so um what else do i want to do now how who doesn't know about deep fake right so again this was trend um on, i mean two months back depending on the time you are watching this tutorial june 20 uh, i mean april this year so again you see uh, again i have taken a data set which was not mine okay it's just there out there on the public repository and we trained this and it was able to tell us you know whether this image is is, is forged i mean is fake or not so again what constitutes fake and stuff like that we're gonna do that later and as you can see that i didn't start training from scratch i use a pre-trained model here i use image data 
as a starting point okay and then i visualize the loss and as you can actually see it was not actually improving okay you know um the loss the aim is to minimize the loss and improve or uh, on the accuracy but here it was giving us kind of um <laughs> an irregular pattern so yeah th there is actually the model is not 3d learning so that's why it turns out you know sometimes it predicted correctly at times it predicted wrongly also all right so another thing that might interest you is on satellite imagery, okay? So these are satellite images, fine. Again, using a unit model architecture, we did some segmentation and stuff like that and did analysis and that worked, okay? So uh, one of the things that, again, I want you to understand is uh, this disease, which we call diabetic retinopathy, okay? So this was trained two hours ago, I mean, completed two hours ago. And if you can, as you can see, you see I was able to train this, that, and then I chose, I mean, it says that this person has moderate what the diabetic retinopathy. Now, in real time, you might actually want to project most of them, right? And try to see, you know, to have compute to what extent this person has that uh, proliferation, fine. So you see here, predicted actual loss and probability. So here it's predicted to that is moderate, right? Actually is two, so it got it correct, right? So the loss function is around 16%, so the accuracy is around 85%, right? So you see here, if you add this two, it's gonna give you 100%. So if you watch this, this was really nice. So predicted is, that means this person has what um, is real, real diabetic retinopathy. So if you go back here, this is proliferate DR, fine. So that is class four. So here, um, this person actually has it and the model predicted that it has it, okay? That means the loss is zero and it is 100% accurate, fine. So what interests us is, you know, what do we do in this case now where the accuracy or probability now in this case i'm using it as accuracy remember guys where the probability is like 68 percent so do you see that this person actually has moderate diabetic retinopathy that is a situation where you have to refer the person to another op or what the ophthalmologist or something like that okay so uh so why did i actually tell you all this so you have to just do this for me just go ahead and fill this form right so it's very simple, guys. It just take you only two minutes, if not if not less than two minutes or so. So ensure you just subscribe and hit that notification icon, okay? And ensure, guys, please just spread this and tell your friends about it. Nobody should pay for anything, all right? So I'm targeting especially those in first years or second years because remember, if you're in seven sem, I'm talking about seven sem students or eight sem students. Yeah, it might be late for you to join because trust me, I'm not going to rush this class minimum six months we have to do this and it's going to happen only once a week fine so just fit this in guys and when you are providing these details um well you can actually trust me fine i'm not going to use your number for any other uh, dubious means so it's safe just to add you on whatsapp and you know for effective communication should the network go down or should we maybe we, we decide to have some meetup or something either way most of the announcements will be online However, if you feel that you don't want to give your WhatsApp number also, it's all well and good, fine. So you can just give some random number in that case, fine. But make sure you provide your college uh, details because the certificates will be provided, okay? And then make sure you read this and don't forget to subscribe and submit. So that's it from my side, guys. I hope I have made myself clear and I really want you to spread this to all your friends, okay? We'll be starting in less than one month, okay? So you call it approximately one month now. So I will see you in class and let's just rock this together. Thank you so much, guys. Till then, happy studying. Bye for now.